Welcome back to AMZ Seller Real Talk. I am your host, Daniel Coleman, and I'm joined by Mark Jepson, COO of Managed by Stats. I don't know what I do there, but I am here. And today we've got Tyler Gregg from Amped. And why isn't that working? There we go. And he's going to talk to us about uh, storefronts and building brands using external traffic, specifically Google. Is that right, Tyler? Yeah, and excited to be here, guys. Thanks for having me on. And excited to kind of talk about some of the things that we're seeing from some of our more advanced sellers and their ability to tap into Google traffic mm -hmm. to then sell their products. I think the way I've been hearing people talk about it is if you send traffic to your Amazon storefronts, instead of just moving products on Amazon, you can actually move products and build your brand. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's interesting topic. Amazon's rolling out more and more functionality to allow brands to lead with their brand and build out their storefronts. So it's a hot topic. A lot of our more our bigger sellers are starting to talk about it and starting to use it. So okay, excited to be kind of on the leading edge on that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm going to let Mark take uh, the reins on this one because as I've been doing wholesale for a decade and I don't run ads for my stuff, um, my knowledge on it is a little bit lacking. So why don't you and Mark just have a chat and then I'll be here to make jokes occasionally or something like that. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it's interesting. I've noticed that um, Amazon's been, been kind of promoting or uh, yeah, promoting features more and more of uh, as a brand owner, you can do more and more things to a protect your account, you know, protect uh, from hijackers and this kind of stuff. But uh, also now more and more on the advertising, um, being able to do a lot more with this. So this is this is definitely an exciting subject. Yeah, I think it stems from kind of the battle with Shopify. Uh, this is speculation. I don't have any inside knowledge, of course. But it seems that as Shopify, you know, has grown pretty well these last few years. Amazon sees an opportunity to allow sellers to build storefronts that kind of look similar to what the experience is on Shopify right. within Amazon. Yep. And especially coupled with the brand referral bonus where it's that 10% kickback for external traffic, where you know the excuse of not sending external traffic to Amazon is you can just send it to Shopify and there's no seller fees. Uh, uh, let's brand referral bonus taps take, into that. Yeah, let's take a little pause right there because uh, I know what you're talking about. Mark knows what you're talking about, but I would wager that not a people, not a lot of people know what it is that is being offered. So why don't you dive into that a little bit and tell us about the offer that uh, uh, Amazon is making? Sure. Uh, so it's called the brand referral bonus, and it's Amazon giving on average 10% back on all external traffic that comes in and purchases your products. So if you bring in uh, traffic from Google. Mm -hmm. and they buy a thousand dollars worth of uh, products from you, Amazon will pay you a hundred dollars back. And so it's a roughly 10% back, but it equates to 30% of your seller fees. Wow. Yeah. So you're getting some, some good kickback from Amazon uh, for, I mean, it, it's, it obviously, uh, if you think of the bigger picture, it obviously helps them more. Um, but, why not take advantage of it, right? They're trying to yeah. use that external that that uh, carrot, uh, <laughs> if you will, to, to keep you on Amazon. Yeah, to keep you on Amazon, but also just to drive in more traffic that is not currently on Amazon. Drive it into Amazon. So mm -hmm. uh, the more stuff you can get, uh, more people you can get from Google, Facebook, you know, other sources of uh, Pinterest. Yeah, who are not currently buying on Amazon to start buying on Amazon, they're gonna you know, they're going to, they're going to reward you for that. So, yeah. yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Tyler, there, there's, uh, there's something a little extra that, that you guys are getting from Google on this. Is that right? Uh, extra in, in what way? Uh, maybe some hundreds of dollars in terms of, uh, Google ads. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when people sign up with amped, uh, thanks for the little plug here. You're and welcome. When people sign up with Amped and they create their first Google Ads account through our system, uh, due to our partnership with Google, uh, you get up to a $500 Google Ad credit. It's a it's a really good, um, obviously it's a great partnership for us to have being tied in with Google, 
but it's great for the sellers that want to start dabbling in Google ads because mm -hmm. Google ads is not something that you see instant results. You know, you're not going to spend a hundred dollars and see $500 in return on day one. And Google right. knows that too. Uh, there's this testing phase, you collect data, just like Amazon ads, where you got to learn, double down on what's working, cut what isn't. And the way this uh, $500 credit works is it's spin 500, get 500. Right. And that's about what it takes to start seeing results on Google ads. And then by the time you've spent 500, then you spend another 500 what's free to you. Now you're pretty far along in your Google journey and you should have a pretty good line of sight on the trajectory of your campaigns. Um, so it's, it's a really, it's smart on Google. I mean, they're smart. They know how to kind of um, give you credits at the right time to keep you moving along. But it takes about a thousand dollars, you know, to really hone in and find success on Google. And from there, there's a huge opportunity to scale. Yeah. You know, there's 5.6 billion searches per day on Google ads. So if you can get over that hump, get through that testing phase and get the right data, there, there's a huge opportunity to really scale and accelerate revenue growth on Amazon. Yeah, absolutely. And and I correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but $1,000 on testing is not that much money today, is it? It's not. And it's it really is, you know, if you're if you're serious about building your brand, $1,000 is is um, is good money well spent. So, um, you know, it, and and also you get all that now brand recognition. You get people seeing your your brand or your your taglines or whatever it is. And um, you know, even if you get you know kind of a bad ACOS while you're doing it, um, you're still getting that uh, that exposure, and that actually helps. Yeah, cool. I thought we could yeah, take a second. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to double on to that, especially with these storefront campaigns, which we kind of started here at the beginning, is as you bring in external traffic straight to your Amazon storefront and you can get people to hit that follow button, even if they don't buy your product right then and they start following you, one of the tools that Amazon's providing is the ability to actually start messaging those people when that follows you. So now you're starting to think about it, again, not as just moving product, but building your brand. Now you can start right. incorporating lifetime value strategies, nurture emails, and, and all those things that you would do on a D2C website you're starting to see kind of the opportunity to do similar things uh, inside of Amazon. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought before we jump into the storefront stuff, because that kind of is a um, another layer on top of uh, what it is that you guys started with, I thought it would be smart to, to kind of go backward a little bit and, and kind of explain to people what is the whole attribution setup? Why is that important? How does that actually um, uh, help an Amazon seller? And um, I guess in, in as simple uh, terms as possible, how to go about doing that and, and whatnot. Sure. So Amazon Attribution is a program that was rolled out, I guess, two years ago now. Man, time's flying here. Yeah. But I think it's been about four years and it's still in beta. So Amazon's still working through some kinks and whatnot. But what it allows sellers to do is to create attribution tags in Amazon and then plug them into their external traffic campaigns, whether it's Pinterest, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or Google ads, and then see when people click on that campaign, do they end up purchasing your products on Amazon? So it gives you that layer of visibility. Now it works, it works great for, you know, emails, you know, just put a little tag on that at the end. If people click your email link, it converts, you see it. Uh, with Google ads, it's a lot trickier because it's not just do they click on the campaign, they have to search a keyword and then there's a keyword level to it as well. And Amazon attribution itself doesn't provide that keyword level data. And that keyword level data is important to understand what keywords converted and what keywords don't. Absolutely, uh, That's what AMP does. Uh, not to talk too much about what AMP does, but we provide that keyword level visibility. And it, it allows sellers to really start scaling with Google and to find the ones that work, find the ones that are productive. When you think about Amazon ads, not every keyword works, right? Like right. you try keywords, yep. don't convert, you stop spending money on. Amazon attribution by itself, unfortunately doesn't give that level of data, which is why you need to use technology uh, to get that deeper level of data to have the information you need. Yeah, cool. And, and I'm going to, this will be my last plug for Amped and, and, and I'm plugging you guys because I believe in what you're doing because 
you're the, to my knowledge, you're the only one that can actually attribute sales di- all the way directly from Google to the, the specific sale on Amazon. And for those of you that want to uh, give AMP to try, I highly encourage that you do. And in order to get that $500 uh, dollar, uh, gift from, from them, what, what was the deal that we have with AMP Managed by Stats and AMP? I, <laughs> off the top of my head, I've actually totally forgotten. Well, it's five hundred dollars, <laughs> right? Was there anything else? Yep. Yeah, so it's five hundred dollars, and you for your first Google Ad account, you create it through the AMP system, mm-hmm. and then uh, if you get started here soon, we have a thirty day money back guarantee. Okay. And it's an awesome way to get started, create your AMP account, try test the waters, see if you can get some traction. And if after thirty days. Uh, or between the 30 and 35 day mark, there's a time limit on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you don't like it, if you don't see the results you want, you just shoot us a message and uh, let us know you came in from Managed by Stats and we'll go ahead and issue that refund. Cool. And I'll, I'll have a link down in the description uh, down below if you want to just uh, attribute that to Managed by Stats so that you automatically get that deal. Um, and uh, But yeah, the, the way I see it is it's an ex- extremely low risk, uh, opportunity. Um, but that's all, that's all I'm going to say on that. You guys continue your nerd talk about ads. Yeah. I mean, one thing that, that, um, a lot of sellers don't necessarily think with, or they are thinking with it, but they're not sure how to do it. Um, when they're trying to get past that, that next level of, of revenue or yeah. number of sales, and they've already done so much work on getting their ACOS and their tacos and all these other funky terms uh, down to the most optimized state they can, um, you can only optimize so much. You now need to drive in other traffic. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's two kind of uh, kudo points that you get. A, you're driving in new blood, so new to your brand people. Um, and Amazon then says, wait a minute, I'm th- this, this seller is driving in new potential lifetime buyers on amazon.com. So they're gonna give you a, some, some kudos both on your uh, bestseller ranking, uh, so your organic ranking is probably going to improve, and you then get that 10% kickback from Amazon, um, where they see that you've dragged that other person into the uh, Amazon arena and now have them as an Amazon customer. So um, it's definitely uh, people who are who have done all the optimization they can. Their ACOS and their campaigns are doing great uh, on Amazon PPC. The next step is doing external traffic, and and this is the the easiest way to transition into doing that. Instead of having to go out and learn Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, Pinterest ads, Instagram ads, all that stuff, um, Google's the the biggest and best out there. Um, and you just this is pretty much a plug and play. I mean, I've set uh, amped up on two of my accounts. I, I was gonna I was gonna actually call you out on this. So yeah. prior to um, <clears throat> excuse me, prior to Managed by Stats doing any form of partnership or uh, affiliate with Amped, you became a customer of theirs. Yeah. So our partnership uh, with Amped is a direct result of Mark and Philip, the CEO of Managed by Stats, actually starting Amped accounts and going, ah this makes sense. Yep. So, yeah. And that, and that, that's, it just it gives you a little kick in the butt, uh, for your, your account where now you're getting more and more external traffic added to the traffic that you already have on Amazon. And, uh, you're getting kind of two or three extra little brownie points on, mm-hmm. uh, on Amazon side. So it's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. And the way we see it too, Mark, you were kind of hitting on this is, this isn't really a replacement to Amazon ads. Like this isn't a replacement to your marketing initiatives. This is the next step. This is that level up component to where, okay, you found success, you kind of know your market. And then now how do we find more customers like this? It can work great for product launches, of course, but it's something that we see as layering onto your other marketing initiatives and um, you know, ballooning your business, not just staying steady. Right. And I think it's so important with how competitive Amazon is, is you can't just, you know, get your X amount of dollars per month and just think you're going to stay there forever. Like, right. You got to keep building. You got to keep growing. You got to keep finding these new customers. Yeah, that that's a that's really well said, because I I am a testament to uh, becoming lazy 
and thinking that the money is just going to continue to roll in. I, I you know, uh, we for years we had zero competition on our products, zero, and we just made more money. We were growing at 20% a year plus with every product that we launched. And then um, a few things happened. Uh, Amazon became very famous to sell on <laughs> and competition changed and rules changed. And, and I, I just want to back you up on that. Like if you're not evolving, you're dying. I guess we'll end that's, the podcast that's more right concise there. So let's let's <laughs> let's, uh, let's dive into this whole storefront thing. So so um, how is that different from the normal attribution campaigns, and and what benefits does it have? Yeah. So the benefits are pretty clear and straightforward. Um, better conversion rates, <laughs> mm -hmm. and the reason that there's better conversion rates when sending traffic to your storefront is also pretty obvious, and it's because there's no competition around. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, if you sell like coffee mugs, right? If you sell a coffee mug and you send traffic to your product listing, you scroll, someone lands on that page. Great. You brought them in. They might like your product. They might scroll down and see a product that has 10,000 reviews yeah. at a lower price. Right. And there's a right. leaky funnel as the shopper. He's not loyal to your product. He didn't search your brand and look for your brand and look for your product to buy. He just looked for a coffee mug and Amazon gave them a million options on your product listing. Yeah. Within your storefront, there is no competition. Only your it's just your products. Yeah. So that's the biggest reason right there alone. Uh, another reason is if you you have an opportunity now, you have um, an audience that is focused on your products, you can sell them other products. Maybe they came in on a red coffee mug and you have a green one and they happen to like green better than the red one. Yeah. So yeah. you can sell these variations. Oh, they're looking for a coffee mug. Maybe they want to buy some coffee from you too, or something like that. And now you can upsell and cross sell your other products in your catalog to a customer that you paid for once. And now you're selling multiple products. To. Right. Right. The third component. And I think this is something that is going to be more of a trend in these next few years, but I know it as a consumer, you know, when I look at, when I go to Amazon, and I go to buy something. I'm trying to understand it. who's selling this product. Is this like some cheap crap or is this like right. an actual legitimate yeah. business that's selling me this product? Yeah. And when you're in, when you send traffic to your storefront, you're leading with your brand. You are right out of the gates. You have this opportunity to show it's an established brand. You can have an about us section. Maybe you're a family business. You do it with your brother or your sister and you can have an about us that says, Hey, like, is a brother and sister business and we've been working hard for yeah. four or five years. We love selling our product. Like, that's, that's a lot more enticing than just buying a product. Absolutely. You know, that's a really good point because I, I hadn't really considered it myself, but when, you know, so I, I'm a huge outdoors off road kind of guy. So a lot of the products that I'm looking at, you know, are, are geared towards that. So I might be looking for solar panels or, battery backups or wiring, you know, wiring to throw another battery in the back of my vehicle, so on and so forth. And there's so much cheap crap out there now yeah. that I have to sift through it to find something that's actually decent. Like one of the things that I ran into recently is I bought a whole bunch of wire to, to run wiring to the back of my Rover and the, what they did, and I didn't catch this, but what they did is they made the gauge of the plastic larger than, uh, quite a bit larger than was necessary and had a very thin strand of copper in the middle. But you don't catch that in the pictures because that's not what they're showing necessarily. But what you see is the, the size gauge of of the plastic. Now so, who's talking funky metrics and stuff and funky yeah, words? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good point. Okay, good. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm just trying to reinforce the fact that I then start go looking, going and looking at the brand. And one of the things that I do is like, if it's just a direct Chinese seller, I'm highly unlikely to buy from them unless I can, unless they've done a very good job of convincing me that it's a quality product and that they have other products that are quality as well. Yeah. So I. That was a very long and technical explanation to agree with you. And that's why you guys are here is to keep me on track. So it might be my <laughs> podcast now, but it doesn't matter. All right, good. There we go. <laughs> no, but that's, I mean, what you just said is 
exactly how I think a lot of people buy on Amazon, right? I mean, how, I can't tell you how many times I've found something on Amazon, looked at who's selling it, and then tried to see if they have a D2C store. Yeah, I don't want to buy from the D2C store because I got to pay for shipping. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to get my credit card. It's not saved on their Shopify site. So right. I just verify that they're legitimate. And then I go back to Amazon and it shows up in two days and my credit card was already saved, right? Yeah, good and point, so I do now, that too. When you can put that branding inside of Amazon, uh, it's, it's, I mean, we see it in the conversion rates, but the logic also makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and that makes sense, like going back to um, a lot of little like hacks or tricks that people used to do on Amazon to rank a product or to get a better conversion rate is sending people to your storefront or sending people to um, uh, inside your store, seeing a bunch of products so that you're not landing directly on that one product and then potentially not getting a conversion on that one product, right? You now have multiple options and you don't have the distractions of other brands, other sellers, uh, you know, clouding the, the customer view. Um, so yeah, this is basically that same concept now applied to Google ads, driving people to those kind of landing pages. I wonder if we're going to start to see, if, would you like to buy this with like upsells on the cart? Just a random thought. Go ahead, Tyler. Sorry. Probably. I mean, if it, if it gets convinces people to buy more things from Amazon, I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon yeah. tries it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to, uh, I, but, I would wager they'll beta test it soon. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but I would add on to that too is with a product listing, you're so confined to the format that Amazon requires for that listing. Yep. You can't actually sell the customer. All you can do is provide details about the product and the person decides if they want it. With an Amazon storefront, you can use what are called sections uh, when building the storefront to where you can actually sell the product. Mm -hmm. They ask for a coffee mug, you give them a coffee mug. On that same page, they can scroll down and see a video of the coffee mug. Then they can scroll down a little bit further. You can put customer testimonials right yep. there. Scroll down a little bit further. You can put different variations of the, the product for them to buy with the add to cart buttons. Yep. So now, just as you would on a traditional D2C store, a Shopify page where you are selling the product and convincing them to buy it, you can do that now on Amazon. And sophisticated sellers can set up their storefronts to do this. But we did a lot of testing on this and it was actually kind of uh, shocking how hard it was to beta test sending traffic to storefronts because so many storefronts were not set up to sell the product. Right. Yeah, they yeah. were set up for In informational, I don't know, no, informational lifestyle images, no yeah. add to cart buttons, no transactional stuff and all yeah. that. And we, we tried to get a bunch of people to do storefronts and like, Hey, can you just change the storefront a little bit? So there's an add to cart button. And everyone's like, oh, it's just so hard to change the storefront. Like, I don't know how to do it and all that. Yeah, because they don't know it's HTML. Not. No, no, you don't even need no. HTML. It's it's actually easy. You just have to, yeah, you, I mean, you have to do it, but it's, it's pretty darn easy. Hmm. So I, for about four months, I heard that excuse. So it took a while for us to get enough volume of beta testers with storefronts that were ready to go. And finally, I heard that excuse one too many times last week, and I ask one of our customers, hey, can you just give me access to your storefront so I can see what it actually takes to do this? It took me 30 seconds to change a storefront page. Yeah. That's the, and it is literally the easiest thing in the world. So we put together a documentation that outlines it with screenshots, but it is it is so simple. Okay. Like, it's way easier than building a Shopify store, trust okay. me. Yeah, like literally um, on the webinar when they were talking about this, I was listening to it and I was like, um, I need to do this too. So I literally, while the webinar was happening, I did it done. Took me five minutes, submitted mm. it for approval. It was uh, approved the next day. Boom. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so Amazon uses what are called sections. And so they're, they're templates. You just click the section that you want and it populates. It automatically pulls in your product information. You put an image, it automatically puts the image on your page and it's templated sections of the page. So it's like building blocks. It's yeah, it cool. is easier than building a Lego set. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's where all all web builders are, are going to today is is just using blocks and then you just put an element inside that block. So yep. I think that's yep, becoming exactly. pretty standardized in our field. Um, so good that's good to know then if if you just watch a wix commercial and then you'll know how to do it is that right <laughs> yeah 
Pretty much, pretty yeah. much. Uh, we also have in our help center, part of what um, AMP's role is, is a core data company to help you create campaigns. But mm -hmm. we also are now an educational company to where we try to educate customers on how to you know, optimize campaigns. Yeah, so you've got- build um, landing pages, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you've got best practices and stuff like that. So we have best practices and we now have an article that totally lays out exactly what you need to do to build a transactional storefront page with cool. screenshots of what it looks like in Seller Central uh, on the store builder side. So it it's about a two minute read. It's pretty easy to implement. Fantastic, okay. Well, that's that's great. Where, where can they find that? It's amped.io slash figure out how yep. to be better at Amazon <laughs> forward slash question mark. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so amped.io, and then we have a resources tab. And oh, under that resources easier. tab, it has our whole help center. Ah, cool. All right, good. Awesome. Uh, we're, we're running about 30 minutes here, 25 minutes. Um, we don't have to end off, but do we have any uh, little nuggets, question, any further questions that you'd like to ask Mark? Or, uh, Tyler, do we have any nuggets of knowledge to drop on anybody here? Yeah, um, you know, I think the trick that we always recommend for folks that are new to Google Ads is there's low hanging fruit of Amazon related keywords. You know, ah. Coffee cup Amazon. That's a Google keyword that people people are lazy. And you as Amazon sellers have the opportunity to tap into that laziness and take advantage yeah. of it. Yeah. And so when people search coffee, coffee mug, Amazon, that's just them saying, OK, I'm ready to buy. I'm going to have a higher conversion rate because I'm yeah. already have my credit card saved. Yeah. And so when you can bid on keywords like that and there's enough volume for your products, take them right to your product listing, skip the comp competition on search results within Amazon, pay less most likely for that cost per click on right. Google. It's a uh, it's low hanging fruit. There's not sometimes there isn't crazy amount of volume, but it is But it doesn't matter. Fruit, you, might as well Right. Yeah, exactly. That that and the fact that your conversion rate is going to spike just because you're adding that external traffic and that's highly qualified yeah. external traffic at that. Yeah. One thing I noticed right. um, when when uh, optimizing my AMP account is the keywords when I'm because I've been doing Amazon PPC for years. So my mentality of Amazon keywords was kind of like you know, I, I kind of felt like I had a box that I would that I would stay within. Um, and Google is a whole different monkey. It's a whole different thing. Like the the people on Google are looking that they're searching for something, right? There's there there it, there's a as a, an intent to do something. Whereas on Amazon, they've already decided they've already decided they want to buy. They're going to research what's out there mm -hmm. and then they're going to buy the best one. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a bunch of keywords and talking about the low hanging fruit. There's a bunch of keywords that if you find the the right kind of like uh, intent to buy, like like he just mentioned, right? Uh, coffee mug on Amazon. Right or or different things where there's like an intent to do something or or some kind of uh, I don't know enough about the Google arena to to maybe talk smartly enough on it, but like there's a point of like the Google keywords are going to be different related but different to what you see on on Amazon or what you're thinking with on Amazon keywords. Is that right? Yeah. A hundred percent. And this is one of the things that we learned really quickly when we launched uh, this Google to Amazon product last um, summer, fall, was people have their Amazon keywords. They were just plugging them in to Google thinking right. they would have the same conversion rates. Right. And that was kind of our quick learning that, okay, we're a data company, but we are also a training company. So we yes. need to teach that that's not the right way to do it. Right. So one of the trainings that I run is that exact thing of how do you think about Google keywords? The example that I use a lot is like a salt and pepper shaker. So if someone searches salt and pepper shaker on Google and you sell a salt and pepper shaker, you might get them to convert. But if someone think about what you're doing when you search salt and pepper shaker, you haven't made the decision what kind of salt and pepper shaker you True. want. Do you want a glass salt and pepper shaker? Do you want a wood salt and pepper shaker? So when we think about the funnel, 
salt and pepper shaker is more of a middle of the funnel keyword. Mm -hmm. That person hasn't told Google exactly what they want. Whereas glass salt and pepper shaker, clearly anyone searching that on Google has done their research. They made their decision on what they want because they yeah. want specifically the glass side of it. And now if you give them a glass salt and pepper shaker, you have a much better chance of converting them because you found the bottom of the funnel people, they've made their decisions, they've told Google exactly what they want, and now you can go get into purchase. Another example is I know I was just talking to someone who their keywords on Amazon were like um, Easter gifts. Mm -hmm. That can work great on Amazon, right? You know, someone searches Easter gifts, they scroll through the pictures until they find a gift that they like, they click on it and they buy it. But Easter gifts on Google <laughs> with no images associated with it, right. that's not nearly, that's a top of the funnel research term. They're going to click on your ad because they'll, oh, I wonder what this person's suggesting. But they're likely going to bounce because who knows if you're gift is the gift that they had in mind or right. is appropriate yeah. for their kid or their, and it know, could even so be like photos be of those specific. things or, you know, not, not, not a, a thing to buy or, you know, maybe Pinterest right. ideas or whatever. Like it's, it's, yeah, like you said, top of the funnel, they're, they're kind of just poking around. They're not really, that intent is not there yet. Yep. Exactly. Cool. You, you guys make me want to start a private label in earnest and actually do ads. Yeah. You should do that. I know. I know I should. There's a lot of things I should do. Uh, cool. Well, hey, uh, Tyler, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. Um, I think that we provided some very good data for our listeners and um, uh, actionable too. So uh, for those of you that have been listening this entire time, thank you very much for listening and tuning in to the MZ Seller Real, Real Talk podcast. What is it? Damn it. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I had it. I had it. Yeah. AMZ Seller it. Real Talk podcast. Um, and anyone that wants to know about Amped, uh, click on the description below. And uh, that'll take you over to the website. And then you get uh, $500, up to $500 uh, Google uh, free dollars. And then uh, 30 days risk-free trial. Did I say that right, Tyler? Yep. Yep, that's exactly it. Cool. All right, good. Well, thank you, everyone. And we will see you on the next episode where something else is going to be talked about because I don't have it lined up. See you later.